and I was instructed at the beginning of people gathering together that I can no longer say Happy New Year. I'm not quite sure why, so happy day. <laughs> and with that, we'll start with America. <coughs> into one that we just don't understand anymore. So, I don't have any names. Was somebody going to bring me names? I'll do the Rotary Minute and then we'll introduce guests. But I don't have any, no guests? No guests. See how simple I made it? Well, Joni also asked me to talk today about Meryl Ross and maybe why we give our speaker books to the Ross Elementary School. Ross Elementary School is named for Merrill and his wife, Barbara Ross. Merrill was a member of this club when I joined in 1981. And I enjoyed his soft-spoken, unassuming charm and friendship at lunch for many, many years. It's very special to me that we honor his connection of Rotary and Education in Topeka by donating our speaker books to the school named for him. The only son of Mr. and Mrs. Richard Ross from Flat Lick in Pineville, Kentucky. Mr. Ross moved to Topeka, Kansas to accept a teaching position in the public schools when he received his call to serve in the summer of 1944. Having already earned a pilot's license from a civilian pilot training program at Pittsburgh State University, Merrill successfully pursued entrance into the Tuskegee Pilot Training Program. But just as he was being prepared to be sent overseas, the war ended. After the war, Mr. Ross returned to Topeka where he experienced the desegregation of public schools as a faculty and administrator of the city's segregated schools. Highland Park South Elementary was constructed in 1955 and was renamed Ross Elementary in November of 1993. The school was dedicated to Merrill and Barbara Ross in recognition for their years of service to the district and the community. Merrill Ross was the district's first black principal of a previously all-white school. Barbara Ross was an elementary teacher in USD 501 for 24 years. Her last 18 were spent at Highland Park South as a kindergarten teacher. Merrill with his son Brian attended the inauguration of President Obama in 2008 as a member of the Tuskegee Airmen who were honored guests of the President. I had the great honor and pleasure to know Merrill as a member of our club. And if any of you are interested in learning more about him, there is more information on uh, Topeka School website. Let's see, I think I wrote that down. TopekaPublicSchools.net and go to the Ross Elementary page and hit the history button and you'll get a lot more. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Actually, Steve was the one that mentioned that we give a book to Ross Elementary School every week and uh, that it'd be nice for us all to know why. So, thank you a lot. Uh, this month, our company goes to Midland Care Connection, resources for Senior Resource Center. And we like to know where our money is going. So I called Midlands and I asked them if they could have somebody share uh, where the money would be going this month. And I get this phone call from Zach. And this is one way we get into a meeting, so. <laughs> I don't know if 
carrot cake today too, so I got excited. But uh, first of all, it's good to see you. I'm here to publicly uh, celebrate that we all have 100% attendance uh, so far this year, including myself, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I do want to share, and I actually see uh, uh, Matt here with uh, KBS and some of our partners in the community. Um, and Rotary is going to help make this even more effective. So last year, uh, we were fortunate to open the Compass Center for Senior Independence, 30,000 square foot uh, investment in Southwest Topeka. And now, with our partnership with Rotary uh, and, the, and your cup, uh, contribution to cup donations, we're going to be able to do some important programming there. And so we opened it up in December to uh, about 200 of our PACE participants. That's a program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. and uh, our permanent kitchen for Meals on Wheels, which is serving about a thousand hot, nutritious meals uh, to seniors. What this is for is for our resource center. So that the other piece to this is we want seniors to be able to age comfortably and safely in their homes. We uh, we talk about the attraction and the recruitment of, of young people. But we also don't want people that are retired and still want to be active and engaged in their community and volunteer and serve to go elsewhere, maybe where it's warmer. And so what we're hoping is the Senior uh, Resource Center uh, will be a place for uh, discussions and information, Alzheimer's, dementia, how to safely age in your home, what services are available uh, throughout Topeka and Shawnee County, uh, to be able to have education for families. And we, see, we just saw that uh, around the Christmas time and holiday time when family members would come back and they'd say, you know, mom, and it may decline just a little bit over time. And so we want to be that resource. Finally, I just want to invite you that if you want a tour, um, I would love to give you a tour. Um, I promise I'll even talk faster on our tour, so if you just have a few minutes, uh, there'll be that opportunity as well to be a part of it. I'm part of Midland because I believe in it. I was introduced to it when I was on the board, when I worked at the Capital Journal, and I'm pleased to be full-time in this work because it, it's an important work, and we're here to serve all of our families. So thank you for your partnership. <coughs> Trivia night with your mouth full. <laughs> While he's uh, coming up, I'll share with you that we are going to be having fireside chats during the month of February, the latter part of February and March. So you might put that in the back of your heads. And what happened to Brian? <laughs> and Brian will share with you about our fundraiser. This year we're doing a new fundraiser and it's uh, called Trivia Night and it's going to be at the Topeka Civic Theater. It'll be on April 1st, so it's April Fool's Day, so it'll be easy for everybody to remember. Uh, what we're going to ask everybody is, if you're interested, uh, buy a table or buy a seat. And uh, we're, we're still getting some of the stuff worked out, but it'll probably be about $25 per person. And there'll be food and drinks available there. And uh, basically, we'll be able to kind of compete against each other, have a fun night of trivia. Uh, we'll also be looking for some sponsors, some table sponsors. So if your company or organization or if you personally are interested in sponsoring a table, that'd be great. Uh, we'll, we'll probably be doing announcements just about every week up until April 1st. So you'll have plenty of chances to, to learn more. Thanks a lot. So I'm not a trivia person. How many of you go to trivia nights and celebrate and have a good time with them? Everybody. <laughs> well, get a team together. Get a team together. Come from that. Uh, it's my honor today to introduce Glenda Du Bois, and I shared with her when I saw her this afternoon, I was kind of surprised that she was letting me do it. <laughs> Glenda and I go way, way, way back. Uh, we're travel mates and uh, enjoy a number of conventions together. And she has been active in our community, the Topeka community, for a long time in a variety of different capacities. And it's, her resume was seven pages, okay? <laughs> But she's also been recognized for her hard work. Uh, she's been honored by the uh, NAACP for Living the Dream Community Service Award. She was the recipient of You Rock from the Mount Zion Baptist Church. She was uh, one of the top 10 American businesswomen recipients for the country. 
uh, and when we were traveling together, she was the chair of the YWCA National Coordinating Board, representing the board nationally and internationally. So it wasn't unusual for her to get an email. There weren't texts back then. Um, regarding something happening with the YWCA somewhere in the world. I learned a lot from that. She's also a member of our club and has served and helped with us receiving district grants. And today she will be talking with us about links and African American organization here in Topeka. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much, uh, President Joan, uh, for this opportunity. And for Chris and John, who asked me to do it, I am just really excited to be able to share with you a little bit about the story of the, the Lynx Incorporated uh, and the Topeka chapter of Lynx. So I ask you, how many of you uh, have been to an event or heard something about the Topeka chapter of Lynx or the Lynx? Oh, right! That's awesome. That is really, really amazing. Well, I tell you, it's, I've been a member uh, for quite a while, and so it is just a, an organization that I feel is one that allows me to really help the community, help the, the, uh, the youth, the arts classes, and all the different things that we do. Our organization, uh, our mission is, um, our thing rather, is transforming our communities. That's what we do. Our goal is really to transform our community. So that's our national theme that really is uh, expected to permeate all the way down from our central to our local areas. And then by doing that, we will fulfill our purpose because that's really our purpose. And our purpose is to do that through friendship and service. Our organization was organized in uh, 1946 and we had two founders. And our founders, um, Margaret Roselle Hawkins and Sarah Strickland Scott, there were two young um, Philadelphian women. And they were visionaries. And they really had in their minds that they wanted to create an organization that would be an intercity club, but one that would really um, be one that focused on friendship and service. So they put their heads together to what that organization would look like. But then they also invited seven of their friends to develop this organization along the Eastern Seaboard at that time. And thus, without that thought in mind, they uh, incorporated the Lynx Incorporated. The Lynx Incorporated had, uh, their, their vision was that they would have a threefold mission. Number one would be civic, number two would be educational purpose, and number three would be a cultural purpose. The organization's aims would actually be to implement these programs, and by implementing the programs, the founders really expected that the members would implement programs throughout the country that would really uh, foster cultural appreciation, civic engagement, and really um, involve the members to really step up to what their roles were in having a better community where they, wherever they lived. Who are we and what is our mission? Again, uh, we are a, an organization, it's an international organization, and currently there are about 15,000 members and women of color, and there's 288 chapters, and our chapters are located in 42 states. The District of Columbia, uh, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and the United Kingdom. We are one of the oldest and one of the largest uh, volunteer service organizations. Again, we are committed to serving, uh, enriching, and sustaining, ensuring the culture and actually the economic uh, condition of people of African American descent. The members of the Lynx are women who are decision makers. We all have our opinions, right? But we're women who are decision makers and uh, they are um, actually women who are distinguished. They have great careers and they're achievers throughout the, uh, the world. And they really work to make a difference in their communities and the world. They are business and civic leaders. We are role models 
and we are mentors, we are activists, and we are volunteers, and we all work toward a common vision of engaging like-minded organizations like the organizations that you all are a part of, and really doing the work that will help us to uh, transform our communities. One of the primary tenets of our organization is service. And the service of the organization is one thing that we are absolutely known for. Across the, uh, on a national level, we con contributed more than a million uh, hours, documented hours, because that's a total requirement for us as a service organization to strengthening our uh, communities. And that's been recognized. It's been recognized nationally uh, from the United Nations Association of uh, New York and also the Leon Sullivan Foundation for Premier Programs. We have in our organization five different facets, and that's how we actually break down our programs and how we deliver our services. Number one is the arts. So within the arts, at the uh, national level and at the central level and at the local level, we have local programs that we actually implement within our community under the arts facet. And for us, the uh, Alvin Ailey Dance Company, I know many of you are familiar with or have seen or gone to those performances. That's one of the groups that we actually partner with to um, implement our arts program. We also uh, have, um, they have a, a summer camp program. And so what our goal is to gather middle school students every summer and take them, they literally pick them up from Topeka here at 6.30 in the morning and take them to Kansas City so that they can actually participate in the uh, ALE program. And they not only learn dance, but they are <coughs> social skills and uh, other professional skills that they learn to help them to be better citizens, conflict resolutions, and all those things that help them to uh, be better community citizens. We've also just began a partnership with the It Takes a Village. How many of you have uh, seen or been to one of their um, performances here at TPAC? We, they are uh, great partners for um, this particular group. And they have had such performances as the Chocolate Nutcracker, which was an amazing performance during the, um, the holidays. And um, there are several others that they're doing. So they are a local performing group that actually is a, an after-school program. And they've just recently been uh, adopted, more or less, or housed by the Topeka Shawnee County Parks and Rec. And so now they have a home, and they are in the Rice uh, Community Center. So that's something we're really uh, excited about as it relates to arts, because we, the goal is really to expose children to art and all the opportunities that they possibly can to help them to become um, involved. The other, uh, the next facet is called services to youth. And in that facet or in that program area, we really work to um, work on programs that focus on education primarily. And for us, it is education from um, birth to uh, the cradle, to, to the grave. So it's not only from the um, through high school and college, but we really focus on children starting um, in at the early ages. We partner with um, the Starmont Vale Hospital, years ago, we did several programs with them where we really focused on the um, infant birth rate and, and morta infant mortality, rather, and really programs that would help to uh, decrease that. Because what, when I mentioned that, we focus on programs that really, in a way, focus on African American and children and disparities that the group have. African American babies are one of, uh, have the largest percentage of um, death within the first year. Even though here in Shawnee County, we have the numbers gone down, the number of babies that are of color that die are still significant. So those are some of the things that we actually focus on. We focus on programs that we call Pathways to College. And those are the programs that really focus on high school uh, scholarships, uh, high school prep type programs to help uh, the students to earn scholarships. Those are the things we do in that area. Our new area that we are really focusing on a lot now is called is, is our STEM program, and you'll hear more about that. The third facet is national trends and services. And in that particular um, area, we focus on the po public policies that uh, actually input, um, impact the civic um, engagement of our organization and then also of our community and the country. So we're really involved in voter registration, 
and really, uh, and voter registration and voter education, because we know that that's where uh, people learn and how you change your situation, is really by becoming involved and registered to vote. So we partner with the NAACP uh, youth group and others to, to, uh, to get that done. We also focus on different legislative priorities. So healthcare is one. So one of the things today, um, in here in the state, we have a focus going toward Medicaid expansion. So those kinds of things that focus on improving healthcare, those are some of the things that we focus on also. Under international trends and services, there are several things we've done in the past that are involved in. One of the projects we've had is called the Black Dolls Project. And what we have done in, with that project is really purchased, and we've had members of the community like yourself, purchase black dolls, and we've sent them to uh, Africa. And for the last few years, we've donated them to one of the um, organizations that I had an opportunity to visit when I was on one of the YWCA trips in South Africa. And the goal of that is that we uh, would provide them with a doll that looked like them. And the goal is to help to increase their self um, self esteem and self esteem. And so now we're in, also involved in a program in Kenya that is called the Youth Talent and Enterprise Development Center. And the program there is really to help young children become more entrepreneurial uh, minded, and therefore they will be more self sufficient. Under health and human services. We focus again on the disparities that, that really impact people of color, being heart disease, breast cancer, and organ donations. In all of those areas, uh, people of color may, or African Americans may not be the largest number impacted, <coughs> but we do see the largest number of uh, fatalities or deaths in those areas. Philanthropy, we are um, at the national level and at our level also, I'll share with you, we are actually absolutely involved in philanthropy. This year, when 2018, we make this on uh, every other year, we were able to make a million dollar donation to St. Jude. And the purpose of that donation was to focus on programs that really impacted sickle cell anemia and, and uh, the research around that and, and uh, programs that would impact that here, but then also in, uh, in Nigeria. So we're really all about our service. That's been really a, it's kind of an overview of our organization at the national level and at the local as we uh, provide programming. But the Topeka chapter of links was um, incorporated or founded in 1958. Um, and so we, logged over 30,000 uh, hours of community service because community service is actually one of the requirements to be a member of our organization. I mean, it's documented and you have to do that. And again, these are some of the things that we've done with some of the partnerships that we've had with businesses here in Topeka. Again, including the Links to a Bright Beginning program and the Dollar Park program, <coughs> the, li the library, and others. McClure Elementary, we partner with them. We provide um, mentoring programs for them throughout the year. For um, USC 501, we are also involved in other programs within the school to provide the same thing we do here in Rotary. The hats, the gloves, all those kinds of things that they really need. Another um, operation or another program that we've done that relates to infant mortality is that we actually collected, we partnered uh, with one of our recent um, members from here in, uh, in this Rotary chapter, uh, Pretty Lakani. Uh, we partnered with her and we provided onesies to um, children in Africa. And they were, in interestingly enough, they were provided as um, incentives so that parents or uh, mothers would be willing to come for uh, prenatal care. So that's another thing that we've done on an international level. Every, every effort that we can to decrease infant mortality is something that we are excited to do. Um, the partnership that we have with Bright Smiles um, and Bright Futures with Colgate Palmolive, the purpose of that and partnering with their mobile uh, is to reduce um, tooth decay and increase um, oral health as it relates to, to your children. We are an organization that's um, involved in fundraising, so when many of you raise your hands, 
I'm thinking that means that you've actually probably participated or attended one of our fundraisers because we have some fun times. I know we've had the fashion show over the years. Uh, we've had the masquerade ball. The fashion show was actually one that we had for over 35 years and it was a signature fundraiser for us. Uh, we've done several different things most recently to continue to raise funds. And the purpose of that is to raise funds for our service programs and for our scholarships. We were recognized by the Association of Fundraising Professionals back in uh, 2017 as the volunteer organization um, fundraiser of the year, so we were excited about that. But that fundraising is only available for us uh, through participation of the members of the community. Also from that, we were able to award uh, over $12,000 to USC 501 school district for our Girls Link STEM program. <coughs> we have a great partnership that I'm very excited about, and that is one that we have with FHL Bank Topeka. They actually came to us and asked how they could really work with us to promote education at the college level among uh, students of color, African American students. And the goal is to really promote, uh, to provide college expenses for them so that they, number one, close that achievement gap, they're able to uh, continue college, and then one of the primary goals of that is that they would stay in Kansas or the Topeka area to really um, start their careers. And over the past three years, we have awarded over $45,000 and uh, to nine recipients. So that's been an amazing, um, an, an amazing partnership with them. This is just an example of uh, students that we've been able to provide uh, high school scholarships to. Over the years, we've been able to provide over $150,000 scholarships to high school students, again, to encourage them to go on to college. It's, it's another step in that pathway to college. And our goal also is to follow those students throughout their college careers. And if there are even ones that come back and, and apply for the FHL Bank uh, scholarship, depending upon their major, again, that's a great way that we have to follow them through and assure that they, uh, they get an education and then that they also get a good career. And finally, a little bit more just about the USD 501 TCALC program. It's being housed at TCALC. It's something that we're excited about. The uh, students will not only uh, learn robotics, but they actually have a simulation program where they are interns. They applied and were accepted as interns, quote, uh, at NASA. So they will be going through all of the uh, process of processes of being a, someone that's hired, what they would do, and how they would actually carry out a career in engineering. So that's something we're very excited about. Currently, we are working with Eisenhower Middle School for their six-week their, their six program. When we're done with that, then we will uh, move on to uh, Robinson Middle School. So we're excited about that particular opportunity. So we're just really excited about all the different programs that we have the opportunity to share with the community and to lift up our students, to lift up the health of our community, and to really uh, make Topeka uh, a better place because we really, that's one of our goals is really to make our community uh, a better place to be. So for this, I uh, thank you for the opportunity to share and, and answer a few questions. It sounds like links could be a cousin of programming in terms of the service oriented. You should know better than to leave down there after learning about Meryl Ross that we have over to the side. Next week, January 16th, there is no meeting. No, no meeting. meeting. Right. Uh, the Greater Topeka Partnership Luncheon is then, and a number of our members uh, attend that, which makes uh, 
not very many members here, and so we just decided not to have a meeting next Thursday. Our next meeting is January 23rd, two weeks from today. It is supposed to be at the Capitol Plaza Emerald Room, and we will do our best to keep you informed if they're moving us or not. We didn't find out till probably five minutes before I sent you the email. So, uh, that the place had been changed. We are working with Capitol Plaza to see if we can uh, make an ongoing re working relationship with them for this to be our regular location. Uh, the program next week will be on the subject movement with Patricia Michaelis. And so I think we're sub celebrating 100 years? Yes. Oh, oh, you guys, I'm really excited that I didn't know the exhibit was coming. There will be a wonderful exhibit regarding the suffragette, suffragette movement and getting the women's vote. And if you haven't seen it, it is fabulous. Do you have anything else to say? Not today, but I will that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and with that, let's show we end with the four-way test. <coughs> With the things we think, say, and do. Is this the truth? Is this fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill with a better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And will it be fun? Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>